All right, so the next topic is going to be light and electron configuration. Now, before we get into the electrons and the electrons jumping around, let's talk about light a little bit. The, uh, the first thing you need to know is that we're going to give you all of this stuff. We're going to give you the speed of light. We're going to give you Planck's constant. We'll give you the nanometer meter conversion. We'll give you the formulas for speed of light and the formula for energy. You just have to know what to do with all this stuff. All right, so here we go. A, calculate the frequency of light that has a wavelength of 4.9 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So is just make sure it's in meters. If it's in nanometers, you got to use this to convert it to meters. But this one's in meters, so it's going to be pretty easy. We have to figure out which formula to use. We've got frequency and wavelengths, so we're going to use the speed of light one. I'd like you to write down the formula, speed of light equals wavelength times frequency, and then underneath each letter, put your number until it looks like a basic algebra one problem. 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Over here, we've got the wavelength, 4.9 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And here we've got a variable. So this looks like basic algebra. Divide both sides by this, 4.9 times 10 to the negative seventh. You're going to end up dividing this by 4.9 something or other meters. Meters will cancel, and you're going to be left with per second. So when you do your math here, you're going to end up with 6.1. I think I wrote a little too big here. 6.1 times 10 to the 14th. And then you can write per second. You could write second negative 1, or you could even write hertz. All of them are the same. <clears throat> All right, question B. Calculate the wavelength of light that has a frequency of. So again, we're going to be using the same formula because it's got wavelength and frequency. Write your formula out, just not as big this time. And then underneath speed of light, put 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Then we've got wavelength. We don't know what it is. We're going to leave it as a variable. And then frequency is going to be 5.3 times 10 to the 14th. And the hertz is here right now. You could also write per second, which I'm going to do in a second, or you could write second negative one. So I'm going to write per second because I want to show you how this per second cancels out. Now you got to get this variable alone. So you divide through by 5.3, da, da da da, divide through. Then over here you're going to be dividing through by 5.3 times 10 to the 14th per second. So you got per second on the bottom, per second up here. So you're going to be canceling out your per seconds. And then you end up with just meters left. Per second is gone. So when you do 3.0 times 5, or divided by 5.3 times 10 to the 14th, you end up with, let's see if I can find a clear area to write this, you end up with 5.7 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. The per seconds are gone, and you're left with, oops, you're left with meters at this point. Okay? So there's the first, uh, first problem, or first set of problems. Now, it says energy here, so we're going to use a different equation. We're going to use the energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. So it says calculate the energy, so we're solving for E. We know Planck's constant always. It's always given to you. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules dot second. Then it says that has a frequency of, and there's my frequency, 6.43 times 10 to the 14th per second. So I'm going to be multiplying the two to together, multiply the numbers together, and energy is going to equal 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th. Not a very big number. 10 to the negative 19th. And look at the units. we got seconds on top, seconds on the bottom, and we're multiplying, so they're going to cancel each other out. So I'm left with joules, and that makes sense because the unit for energy is joules. So it's going to be a little bit of, of energy. 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And there's my answer for that question. All right, the last one here. Calculate the energy of an emission that has a wavelength of. So I'm given the wavelength here. Looks like we're going to need a little bit more space for this one because this is going to be a two-step problem. So let's do this. Yeah. Okay. The first thing you have to do is calculate, or, uh, use wavelength and speed of light to figure out the frequency. Once you get frequency, then you can use the energy formula. So we're going to write out speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second equals 5.55 times 10 to the negative 7th meters times frequency. 
So you want to get frequency alone, divide through by this. You get the idea. Divide through over here. So now meters on top, meters on top is going to cancel, and you're going to end up with per second. So there's your frequency. Frequency in this case is going to be 5.4 times 10 to the 14 per second, or you could write second negative 1, or you could write hertz. I don't care what you write, but I'm going to leave it as per second because we're going to use that in the next section. So there's my, my frequency. Now the problem says calculate energy. So now this is the second part. I'm going to take my energy formula, Planck's constant times frequency, and I'm going to plug in Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th. And in the frequency spot, I'm going to plug in what I just solved for, 5.4 times 10 to the 14th per second. Now Planck's constant had joules seconds for units. So I look at the seconds on top and the seconds on the bottom, and just like in the previous example, seconds cancel out, and I'm left with joules. So when I do this math here, energy is going to equal 3.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And there's my final answer. So that's a two-step problem. It says calculate the energy, so I have to use the energy formula, but they give me the wavelength, not even uh, the frequency. So I have to go from wavelength, from wavelength to the frequency, from the frequency to the energy. So that's a two-step problem to get there. All right, let's go to the next problem. It says calculate the frequency of an emission that has an energy of. This is going to be a little bit easier because we have the energy. We know Planck's constant, and all we have to do is solve for frequency. So the energy is going to be 4.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules equals Planck's constant, which is a constant. We always know this. Joules seconds times frequency. So we're going to divide through by Planck's constant. Get the idea. Divide through by Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. You see what happens to joules. They both uh, cancel out. Then we end up with the numbers dividing through and then per second on the bottom. So in this case, frequency is going to be, uh, where's my answer, 6.94 times 10 to the 14th per second. Or you could write second negative 1, or you could write hertz. They're all fine. Okay, So you should be able to use the formulas that we give you and be able to solve problems, either one-step or two-step problems here. All right, you should be familiar with, uh, with this electromagnetic radiation spectrum. You should know that in the middle is going to be visible light. You should know next to visible light on one side or the other is going to be uh, ultraviolet and infrared. Now, this is the long wavelength. So it's oh, long wavelength, and this is, as a result, a low frequency and low energy. On this side, we have the opposite. We have high energy. We have high frequency. A lot of waves go by in a single period of time. Okay, and there's a very short wavelength. The, Crests are very close to get together, the troughs are close together, and so forth. So now we have a, a problem here. We don't know if on one side of visible light it should be ultraviolet or it should be infrared. Now the side that's more dangerous that you know gives skin cancer is ultraviolet because it has more energy. So ultraviolet is going to be on this side with the shorter wavelength, higher energy, and infrared is going to be on this side. Therefore, our visible light spectrum is going to run from red, right after infrared, it goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then violet is going to be right next to ultraviolet. If I was to give you this backwards, if I was to have the real close guys here, and then they start getting longer as you go that way, then it would run reverse. You would say that ultraviolet is over here on the high energy side of this picture, infrared is on the low energy side of this picture, and then my visible light is going to run from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet in that direction. So it's going to be opposite. So if you do get a picture and you have to label it, <coughs> excuse me, make sure you know which way the uh, the spectrum's going, which way the high or which side the high energy is, and so forth. Okay, now the rest of this after uh, infrared, we have microwaves, and next to that, with the lowest 
energy, the lowest wave or the longest wavelength and lowest frequency, we have radio waves. Okay? On this side, we're getting closer together, we're getting more energy, higher frequency, shorter wavelength. We're going to have x-rays. And then uh, the most damaging of the group here is going to be gamma rays. So you should be able to label a diagram, decide which sides low energy, high energy, low frequency, high frequency, long wavelength, uh, short wavelength, and then label it accordingly. Okay, so practice doing that. Number three says, what's the difference between emission and an absorption spectrum? And then how are they each formed? What would they look like? Da -da -da -da. So let's look at the picture first, and then we'll talk about them. Here's a continuous spectrum. We see all the colors, one blends right into the other. Here is an emission spectrum. These bands are energy that's given off when the electron snaps back down to its ground state. So if here's the nucleus, here's the electron normally, zipping around in this fuzzy region here. If it gets energy, it's going to move away. Now it absorbs energy so it can move to a higher energy level and it can stay out there. Remember, this guy is negative. This guy is positive. They want to be close together, so you have to put energy in to get it out there. When it moves from this ground state up to a higher energy level, it has to absorb energy. So it's going to be removing certain colors, so it creates dark lines where those colors are gone. And then when it crashes back down, when it releases that energy, it gives off those bright colors. So we actually see bands when the, um, the electrons crash back down and they emit their or give off their light. So that's the difference between an emission and absorption spectrum. I recommend pausing this right now and reading the blurb, reading the answers up here, um, but I basically explained it to you. Okay, number four. How does a quantum mechanical model differ from Bohr's planetary model of the atom? Now this is what Bohr thought. Bohr thought that the nucleus was in the center and the little electrons went zipping around just like uh, planets went around the sun. That worked great for hydrogen, but it didn't work for any other element. So some other people here looked at that and said, uh, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What can we change about it so it does work? And Schrodinger came along, and he dealt with a whole bunch of math, and he came up with this quantum mechanical model. And he said that electrons were not found in very specific paths. They were found in regions. And those regions could be divided into energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals. And we can probably find an electron in those areas. So you guys have seen this big fuzzy electron cloud, little itty bitty nucleus and then just dots everywhere forming this big fuzzy electron cloud. Well, hopefully you know, and we talked about this in a different video, that the electron cloud is actually divided into uh, energy levels and then uh, within those energy levels are sublevels and within that are even orbitals. So for instance, this, elect or this uh, atom here, this has got the first energy level, this kind of a purplish color, then that's 1s, then you've got electrons in this energy level, 2s, and you've got electrons in the 2p sublevel here. So we've got electrons all over the place, but they're in certain regions. Two are here, a max of eight could be here, and so forth. And if this atom had more electrons, we'd have to start filling more and more and more energy levels. And if you want to look at a summary of them, take a look at this picture. All right, so we've got the first energy level containing just s. We've got the second energy level containing s and p. So second energy level would have a round guy and would have the p's. The third energy level would have the s, the p's, and the d's. Oops, let me write s, p, and d. And the fourth energy level, and every level from there on out, would have the s, the round s, the uh, figure eight shape p, the clover, sort of shape D, and the crazy looking F shape down at the bottom here. So those are where the electrons would hang out, and make, and that's how they make up the energy levels. So take a look at this diagram, or this table rather, check, see what you've written. Um, this table on the right here should match up with the picture. Remember orbitals are like seats in a theater, but seat for two. So S there's only one shape, one orbital, but we could put two electrons in it, so that's two total electrons can be held in there. P, there's three different orientations. Three times two electrons in each give you six, a max of six electrons can be held there. D, there's five, one, two, three, four, five different shapes. We can hold two electrons each, so there are going to be ten electrons. And finally, this last one here, there's seven of them, and they're each going to hold two, 
so they can hold a, a max of 14. Oh, I'm problems here. They can hold a max of 14 electrons. Okay, so you should be familiar with uh, the electrons and and how they're oriented and so forth.